What's going on guys here sports cards coming at you with another video today yes this is another collector reacts monday video i know i haven't really done this series in a while but now that i finally finished finals i finished school finished my freshman year of college i have time to sit down and do a collector reacts video today's gonna be a little bit uh, bit more of a somber video today we're reacting to how basketball card collecting nearly destroyed my life the dark side of card collecting um, by george wiley and so um, I have seen this video before and I wanted to share with you guys because it's actually really impactful and I still think about this video today. Um, I saw it a few months ago and I was like, I, I need to make a video on this. Um, and you know, I'm just gonna, you know, without further ado, let's get into the video. It is about 13 minutes. Um, let's take it away. The hobby used to be a place where a kid could walk into a store and spend five bucks and get a pack of cards. That's not the case anymore. So a couple years ago, I made a video on PSA grading. And really ever since then, I've had people request additional video content. Figured it'd be a good time to kind of talk to you about my hobby experience and to be brutally honest about some of my experiences. My situation is different than your situation. Um, my history is different than your history and my experiences are different than your experiences. So. Take that with a grain of salt. Somewhere around 97, 98, I was in middle school and um, started really getting involved in, in card collecting. So I'd go to the local corner store, had a great experience. You know, I'd go in there with a handful of dollars, maybe buy a pack, maybe buy a, a card in the case. And every once in a while, I would buy a box. And I was really into uh, Topps Chrome. Great year, loved. Who isn't in Topps Chrome, am I right? <laughs> Love Topps Chrome, love Optic, love Panini. Topps Chrome is where it's at though, especially at the beginning of collecting. For me, like 2013, 2014, Topps Chrome was the thing for football, baseball, basketball. Awesome. Uh, Vince Carter, collecting Vince Carter, Kobe, Garnett, Jordan, like all the typical guys, right? And so I'd save up and I'd go in there with my brother and we were spending maybe 80 to 100 bucks on Topps Chrome, like that was the best box you could get at the time. The hobby was much different than it is now. 80 to to $100 for Topps Chrome? Get me in on that. Fast forward to 2015, I have uh, a son who's really kind of in that prime age of where I was when I was starting to look into uh, collecting cards. And I was looking for a Christmas gift for him and we were at Target and I was looking around and if you ever looked for toys at a, at a store like Target during Christmas, like it's a lot of junk, like to be completely honest. It's a lot of stuff that you're like, eh, Facts. I have to get gifts, but this thing isn't really all that cool. And uh, so I'm, I'm going through the aisles, just kind of looking randomly and I see cards and um, the thought dawned on me, like he would love that. Like I loved that when I was a kid, that was a huge part of my childhood. Like he will love it too. I was looking for tops and, and upper deck and all those brands Fleer that I grew up collecting and um, saw Panini and it might sound crazy that in 2015 I didn't know what Panini was but like it's when fine. you're not in it like you you just it's easy to not know those things sure. I saw a box of box of Excalibur so I thought wow this thing's got the security seal on it it's 60 70 bucks I remember Excalibur basketball it was um, John Wall, I think, was on the cover of the Blasters and the Mega Boxes, and they had security seals in them, which was... I don't know why. I don't even think you could pull anything crazy in them, but I do remember Excalibur. That was, like, right when I was getting into collecting, too. It's got to be good. There's got to be something huge in there. Christmas Day comes, he opens it, and, like, nothing. We got, like, a Joel Embiid base card. Nothing crazy. There was a card with a ball on it, but it was some player that he had never heard of. Like, just was not what we expected. And immediately, my son's reaction was, wow, what a waste. Like, he knew about how much that box was, and for what we got out of it, he was kind of blown away. Buy singles, ladies and gentlemen, buy singles. I'm telling you, singles are where it's at. In the back of my mind, and this is, this is the whole premise of the hobby. In the back of my mind, I thought, there's gotta be something else at Target. There's gotta be something big in those boxes. I just picked the wrong one. So I started to kind of think, and if I'm being completely honest, I started to kind of manipulate and justify how I could possibly go back and spend another 70 bucks on a box of trading cards. Mm. A couple of days go by, we're all home Beginning from break, of an addiction. and 
I am convinced we're going to go to Target and get another box. So we do. We go, we spend another 60 bucks, and nothing. Like, the, the box was worse than the first one. But I've had this yep. sense of, like, ugh, I just messed up. Like, I just did something that I probably shouldn't have done, and now I feel gross about it. Then I was like, well, what what else is in these boxes? Like, what do people hit these hit in these boxes? So I went on YouTube and searched Panini Excalibur boxes and found uh, a bunch of videos of uh, what was called breaking. Immediately, it, it hit me. Like, there are people out there that you can pay to open a box of cards for you, and then they'll just ship you everything that's in it. So I thought that's the most exciting part of the hobby. Like opening the packs was the best part. Why would I want to pay someone else to open cards I didn't, for me? Then I, I didn't get that at first either, but let's just wait. Let's see what he says here. But I didn't get that at first either. Why would somebody, you know, why would I pay someone to open my box of cards? I started thinking like an entrepreneur and a business owner. And I was like, well, those guys are probably making a killing. Like people are paying them to open the boxes. They get to do the fun part. They're probably making a, a bunch. So I started looking into uh, the breaking. I started to look into the process of acquiring um, a certificate and, and getting in hooked up with distributors and all of that, getting connected with a business, you know, starting a business account. So I did all the right paperwork and all that stuff and, and really kind of dove full into this. At the time in 2015, basketball cards were not anywhere near where they are in 2021. Like it is ridiculous now. Like people are spending, 25,000 basketball has come down baseball i'm sorry baseball has come down basketball is on the way up that's the reality right now thousand dollars for a, a case of flawless Twenty five thousand dollars. like if the hobby will teach you anything it will teach you how to devalue a dollar like it is crazy Fast. what people spend money on i got into uh this breaking so and I, I got hooked up with a distributor and, and started buying all these cases well i started out i bought a couple cases of intrigue and i thought man i'm gonna jump on here and i'm gonna fill these breaks right away and no problem so i jump on there uh, have everything set up properly and it took three days to fill the first case I'd get home from work and I would just be on there till two, three in the morning. And eventually, you know, a case would fill. And so I'd sell the case and I would get down to the end of it after three days and I would make 200 bucks. I, I can't believe the amount of work that I did for the small amount of profit I got on mm -hmm. some of those some of those cases. And then I started getting into um, larger cases. They would take me forever to fill. And most of the time I couldn't fill the whole case. So I would either give huge discounts on the teams or I would myself purchase the remaining teams. And because of that, a lot of times I would lose money or I would keep my profits so low that after shipping, you know, I'd sell a case and then I'd ship everything and it would cost me 80, 90 bucks and I would lose all my profit. I started to lose money and that's not good. <laughs> similar to collecting cards. If you are not brutally honest with your profit margins and what you're actually spending versus what you're getting back, you will lose faster than you can ever imagine winning. Here's the kicker. I gained some friends through this process. Some people would come in and they would buy, you know, the 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 Spurs every time or the Lakers or, you know, the regulars would come in and I, I got to kind of get to know these guys and, and build that relationship that I think a lot of people really value about the hobby, which is a great thing. But then, you know, I would see the people that would come in and maybe they would have 17 bucks in their PayPal account and they would take, you know, the, the nets or they would take a, a, a terrible team just at the chance of getting a hit. If you've ever watched card breaks, if you've ever purchased a case or a box by yourself, it is very rare, very rare that you'll get the amount of value out of the box that you paid for that box. So I started to see these people come in and, and, in desperation buy spots and buy teams. And that's the side of the the breaking in the hobby that I really couldn't, I, I couldn't sleep with. Understanding that I was contributing to people who were really deep into addictions. And myself, that thrill of collecting and the greed associated with the big hit was something that I was struggling with. You know, once I got to kind of know those people, I couldn't collect that money. I had a guy tell me one time, hey, um, 
ship my cards to my office because I don't want my wife to know that I was breaking. God, so sad. You know, and it's like we, like, you know, we as collectors, and I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're a collector, we don't realize that, like, there is an addiction that kind of goes with cards, and that's what this video made me realize, and that's why I wanted to share with you guys. You'll see as he kind of keeps talking how we're addicted to cards. I mean, that's, that's pretty serious. For me personally, getting to know the people that uh, were my customers within breaking, um, I got to see a part of myself. I got to see a person that was really just chasing the next big hit and um, spending money that you worked really hard for. Like every dollar that I make doing my job, I'm spending hours and hours a day doing my job. Every dollar that I make is, um, it's important. And it goes to support my family and it goes to hopefully give back to others. This is where his concept of devaluation of the dollar comes in, right? He's working so hard in his real full-time job to make money and then he's almost wasting it on cards, right? He's just kind of throwing it out. It's not really getting any real value from opening cards here. And that's really where the problems stem from for uh, George. And when you're carelessly throwing your money, just trying to chase that next hit, like if you don't, if you've gotten this far in the video, if you don't think this Which we applies all have. to you or that you have an addiction, ask yourself, when you pull a card from a box, what's your first reaction? Is it, wow, that's going to sell for a lot of money on eBay? Man, I just made my money back or anything regarding money. If that's your response, then you probably have a problem. He's not wrong. I wouldn't argue it's a problem, right? Well, I think it is a problem and it isn't a problem. So for me personally, I, I really don't rip packs too often, right? I, I'm more of a singles collector, you guys know that. Of course, I rip for content, but in the ret in retrospect, that's an investment for ad revenue um, when it become monetized, right? He brings up some good points. I think that if you open packs, you're like, I think I just made my money back, yeah, you're gambling. Gambling is some sort of an addiction. Not necessarily a problem. Well, one could argue it's a problem, right? It's, it's definitely something you need to kind of look at, and I can see places in the hobby when I open packs, right? Like, I think that's an addiction. Uh, I think there's addictive things in the hobby, like being on eBay all the time or XYZ, but it's really the value you get out of it and what you put into it. Um, and so I, I can see that if you think that way, sure, you have a problem, but sometimes just, you know, when I make content and I pull a big card, sure, I'm like, okay, this is a great investment for the channel, um, but at the same time, I'll make some money in the box, which is always a plus. So I see what he's saying. There's no way around it. The hobby used to be a place for kids. And now if you go into a local card shop, just look around. It's a bunch of guys like me. It's a bunch of 30, 40, 50 year old men who now have money because they have jobs who are spending hundreds and thousands of dollars a month. And for what? There's a few people in the community that are that are pretty big hitters. Um, I'm not going to name names. I know you probably know who they are. <laughs> really genuinely nice people. I really believe that. But they're also very wealthy people. We're not talking about people like me and you that have normal jobs. We're talking about people that have an abundance of cash. You see someone else's big hit, someone else's collection. Hey, look what I have. Look at this. Look at that. And your response is, wow, I, I need that, or I need that investment, Good point. or I'm going to make a killing too, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. That comparison game is very dominant within the hobby. These big social media heroes, if they would just be on, honest with their customers, with their followers on Instagram, and, and be transparent about the true amount of money they are spending to acquire the hits that they have, I think you'd be able to kind of understand what that ratio looks like. It's As probably not profit. Who bought a lot of Thing is here, if you're big on social media, you're not really necessarily worried about how much you're spending on packs or like cards in general, like because you're making a revenue from the form of social media you're doing, right? So people on Instagram have a platform to make revenue easier than someone that doesn't have a platform on Instagram. For example, YouTubers that make money from ad revenue. When I become monetized, I can probably be more free in buying some boxes to open up because I'll make the money back from the, the, the video, right? And then whatever I sell is profit. So, although they're selling a lot, 
you are making a lot of money from social media if you're a big hitter that posts on social media. Cases of cards. Opened a lot of boxes of cards. Lost a lot of money within the hobby. It's not there, guys. You're chasing the wrong things. I'm just gonna be completely straight with you. You're chasing the wrong things. If you think that you're gonna make money off of buying boxes of cards and opening them, buying cases of cards and opening them, you will not. In my Correct. darkest days in 2018, when I had to sit down and really take an assessment of the damage. You won't make money buying boxes, but I definitely say you can make money buying and flipping singles. That had occurred from my hobby. I was $20,000 in debt. $20,000 in debt. I wrote my- That's so much money, guys. So much, $20,000 is so much money. Story, and I put it into a blog on blowout cards and a lot of people had similar stories or even worse stories. I've talked to people who um, have had that kind of debt, $100,000 in debt, have been, have lost marriages. Um, their wives have left them. Their family has left them. Collecting and cards, it's a dangerous thing. Be careful, be aware, be, be alert, and understand the impact of your decisions. Understand the odds that are stacked against you. Understand the influence that you have on the people that are around you within the community. The car community truly is a great place. And I think there are people that genuinely love the relationship side of things, that have the resources, have the ability to collect, and more power to them. But there are a lot of sharks in the water. It's easy to hide an addiction and a hobby. So if you need help, I'd love to reach out to you. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear um, your experience within the hobby. And if you want to stop or get out of the hobby or sell your collection or just be done with it all, man, I'd love to cheer you on in that. If you want to continue collecting and if you want to build your uh, collection and grade your cards and um, stay engaged in the hobby and you can do it financially, I love it. And for me personally, I'm thankful to be out of that debt. I had to make some huge job shifts and financial decisions to recover the debt that I had lost in 2015. It took me years to get out of that. So if you need help, if you want somebody to talk to, if you want to reach out, please leave me a message. I know there's probably going to be a lot of hateful comments. I know there's going to be a lot of discouraging comments. That's fine. You have the right to say whatever you want to say. But for me and my story, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Hope to connect with you. Thanks again. Wow. Wow. Very interesting video, guys. Um, I wanted to react to it because this is definitely an issue that I see in collecting. Um, I personally don't feel like I necessarily have it. I would say I'm addicted to cards, sure. But I don't open wax enough to really feel that way. Um, I try not to gamble too, too much. I more see this as investing. Um, but this is what can happen in card collecting. Let me know, guys, you, let me know what you guys think um, down in the comment section below. Um, you know, just about the video. Uh, go subscribe to George. I'll, I'll leave his link down in the description. I just wanted to share. This is some food for thought. I know I've been thinking about it for months now. Uh, I saw this a long, long time ago. I thought it'd be an interesting uh, card collector reacts Monday. Sorry for the for the definitely um, more somber video, right? Uh, definitely sad, um, but I just wanted to share with you guys. But I'm gonna leave you guys there. If you haven't, go check out my last few videos. I have some cards for sale in my last video, and then uh, I talk about retail hunting in the past you know, four or five videos. So guys, go check them out. Thank you for watching. I'll leave you there. Consider subscribing. Peace.